I'm having an affair. Yeah, I've said it. It's passionate and exciting. My love has never let me down, never betrayed me. Of course, on occasion, it's promised things that it really couldn't deliver, but I mean, that's the nature of this, so it's to be expected. It was my mum that introduced us, uh, but I don't think even she realised just how much it would take hold, how at times it would absolutely consume me, or how it would become my one true love. I am, of course, talking about books. I was at an event recently when I overheard my mum and she said, oh yes, our Taryn, she could read and write before she went to school. It was my event and it was one of those moments when you're really doing your best to be professional, but you know how mums have a way of instantly derailing you. But it brought to mind a conversation, one of those where as a child, you know that it'll have a significant impact on your life. It was between my mum and my infant teacher, who was quite put out. In fact, she was so put out that I could read that she had suggested my mum take my books away from me. I can remember holding my breath. My mum looked at her, and then of course she laughed and went, don't be so absurd. My little mouse loves to read, and that was that. So I spent the remainder of reading time at school with the children that were struggling, uh, perhaps in the hope that I could bring them on, and certainly as a way to maybe hold me back. But that was okay, because by then I'd found the local library, and that became my teacher. I love to find ways to challenge myself, and I taught myself basic French. But more importantly, I discovered the English language, uh, in particular Shakespeare. My favourite then, and probably even today, being The Tempest. Now, if like me, you're a child from the 70s, you'll have grown up with various TV shows, and I'm sure if I was to ask you, would all have your, your own favourite, and it perhaps be something like Tiz Was, or Magpie, or I don't know, maybe Mooncat or something. But mine was a little bit different, and I used to sit transfixed, waiting and hoping, because it wasn't on every day, but waiting for this particular, somewhat creepy, opening music. It was a little bit like Jack and Ori, but darker. And while I was doing the research for this, I actually managed to find online The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, complete with animation, which for a children's program, yeah, it's a, it's a bit dark. Uh, but I used to sit there and I'd be transfixed watching the TV, watching all these stories come to life. Now, my nan, is, was, was also the person that would encourage me to read. She was a, a voracious reader, and every Saturday she'd make a beeline for the second-hand book stall on the local market. Uh, the storeholder was pretty canny, because he'd realised that he could encourage repeat custom by offering money back on books that you return to put towards your next purchase. And my nan was there, week in, week out, buying her Mills and Boone and her silhouette desires. And she would often let me buy a book as well. Now, I wasn't such a good customer because I never wanted to give them back. And in fact, here are three that I still have over 35 years later. And they are absolute treasured possessions. Now, my nan's books have an awful lot to answer for because it wasn't long before I picked them up and started reading them. Swept away and absolutely convinced 
that a handsome cowboy on a stallion was going to sweep me off to his ranch, or a millionaire businessman with dark, brooding anger would realise that his life was incomplete without me installed in it. So you can imagine my disappointment on becoming an adult, on realising that not only did I have to shave my legs. Now, the women in these books, they never did. Nor did they ever use a bathroom. But these men, they didn't exist. Not where I was looking. And that perhaps was the, the first ever betrayal that I got from a book. I was really, really fortunate that in my secondary school, my English teacher recognised my love of reading. Mr Peck was an amazing teacher and he had a love of literacy that knew no bounds and he could encourage even the surliest of teen. And he introduced me to what was to become one of my all-time favourite authors, Edgar Allan Poe. He set us the challenge to write a telltale heart, but from a different perspective. I recall becoming lost in my imagination. There I was, lying in bed, day after day, knowing that I was dying, but what was that light? What was that light that got bigger each night? Was it death coming for me? Was it my love trying to find a way to reconnect us? Was it demons coming for my soul? No! The man that I trusted, the man to whom I had left everything, taken by greed, was taking my mind, driving me insane, and I vowed, I vowed that I would not rest, my heart would not stop, until I had had my revenge. Mr Peck sent my story off to a magazine, and it was published. I was 13. That teacher stoked a fire inside me that already existed, and I knew then, I knew that I wanted to be a writer. But life, as did marriage and children, got in the way, and I didn't have time to write. I was busy making a living. However, fate, if you believe in that, as I do, had other plans. And in 2010, following a divorce, I got my own business going, and somebody asked me out of the blue, could you proofread my book? Well, give it a go. Um, and we ended up working together on the book, and it became, I came to realize that that was something that I really enjoyed. And then he said to me, can you publish it? Now, I'm a massive fan of this quote. So, as Richard suggested, I said, yes, I can. And that went on to change my life. It was a decision that I am profoundly grateful for. People share their stories. They pass on information. They give knowledge away, day in, day out. This isn't something new. We've been telling stories for millennia. It's ingrained in us, it's in our blood. What started out as cave paintings became word of mouth, and then finally became the written word. So what I do in being a story maker is nothing new. But it's just as important. People ask me, Taryn, is there still a place for the, for the physical book in a digital world? Well, I'll refer you back to those three books that I still have. If I pick one of those up, I am back with old friends. I know where I was, where I made that mark on the cover or one of those internal pages. They are memories in physical form. They are tangible emotions, and you can't underestimate the smell that a book gives you. And I know that if I was to talk to you now about some of the most famous 
book burnings in history. I know, I know that you would mourn with me. But Milton says it best. He who kills a man kills a reasonable creature, but he who destroys a good book kills reason itself. Books to us are a way of passing on our knowledge and a way of sharing. They connect us in so many different ways. Last year, I was fortunate enough to write and publish the autobiography of Bob Champion, MBE. For those of you not familiar with Bob, he was a jump jockey who in 1979, at the height of his career, was diagnosed with testicular cancer. He was given eight months to live. Thankfully, Bob survived with an amazing will and a determination that he would ride in a particular race on a particular horse. Ten months after his last round of grueling chemotherapy and after the horse had been declared lame, Bob won the 1981 Grand National on a horse called Old Neaty. I asked Bob how he felt and he said, I feel guilty. Guilty that I survived when so many do not. And because of that, he went on to raise, uh, to create his own cancer charity and raise 15 million for male cancer research. Now, as you can imagine, I spent a great deal of time with him and I've lost count of the amount of times that people came up to him and they shook his hand and they said, thank you, Bob, thank you. Your words have inspired me to keep going. Now, I'm really, really fortunate that I am surrounded by words, by books, but most importantly by stories every single day. I share the pain of authors, and believe me, there is a pain and a fear. Uh, that's me and my famous black pen going through. No, we've got that. Um, there is a fear, of course there's a fear. Uh, will you be judged? Will people view you differently? And of course, you know, will anyone actually buy it? But I think what's really important to remember is that no matter what your story is, you can help somebody. Whether or not you are passing down information, whether you are passing on a tradition, whether you're sharing your story so that you can help somebody the way that Bob did. And of course, the absolute precious gift of giving somebody of your imagination, that cannot, cannot be underestimated. There are so many tales that have been told, and yet, there are so many more yet to be told. So I hope that today, in sharing my love affair with you, that maybe I've just stoked a fire in at least one of you, that you will leave here today and start your own affair, or resume one. But I wish you a very, very happy love affair. Thank you. Woo!